Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Kate Gray for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. What's the value of a remake? That's a question we found ourselves asking as we played Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life, a remake of the 2003 Harvest Moon game on GameCube, and a surprising addition to Marvelous X Seed's catalog of games. Should a remake of a game bring it up to today's standards with modern additions like improved UI, extra features, and generally just more content? Should it be faithful to the original and be simply ported over to new platforms as is? Or should it be an attempt to recreate the feeling of playing that game for the first time as a kid? We've been cautiously looking forward to and dreading this remake for a long time, because while we're excited for the complete graphical overhaul, the new localization, and the option to play as a male, female, or non-binary farmer, we also have a deep and sacred fondness for the original, and we have enough experience and wisdom from the past 20 years of gaming to know that that original doesn't match up to our current standards of fun. Do we want this remake to be dramatically overhauled or presented in its imperfect state? We didn't know what we wanted until we played it. Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life has a lot of things you may expect from a farming sim. You can raise cows, sheep, chickens, ducks, and goats, and you can plant crops and trees in your fields to make money and use them to cook recipes in your cute little kitchen. There's a town full of people, all with interesting stories and unique houses, and eight of them in this remake can be married. You'll be trying to make money to buy things like tool upgrades, new facilities, and animals, which in turn will hopefully make you more money. Or you can just buy cute new outfits. It's totally up to you. Now the thing that sets A Wonderful Life apart from other farming sims is that it's one long story. Over the course of several decades, split into six chapters, you'll go from a young upstart working on your dead dad's farm to an elderly married farmer with a child who can grow up to take over the farm or choose an entirely different career path. The townsfolk will age and grow with you, and the town itself may change too. There's never really been another farming game quite like this. It feels, at first, like this remake of A Wonderful Life is all new, especially if you've played the original on GameCube. The town and farm are no longer sludgy shades of brown. Half the characters you remember are now called something entirely different to bring them more in line with the Japanese names. Muffy becomes Molly, Cody becomes Gordy, and Celia becomes Cecilia. A few of the more insensitive or odd features have been smoothed over, and even the UI is vastly improved. Some changes remove the bite that the original had. The misanthropic Marlin is now a much younger man called Matthew, whose updated form makes him come across as more of a whiny incel than a grump. Gallon, the old man whose story gets, well, it changes in chapter two, is now called Gary, which doesn't really sound like much of an old man name. It reminds us of Ash Ketchum's rival from the Pokemon anime. But otherwise, everything else just feels very nice. But sadly, inflation has also struck Forgotten Valley, making it quite a lot harder to buy big ticket items. The processing room, which turns milk into butter and cheese, which is one of the main ways to get money in the game, used to cost 30000 which you could earn within the first year if you were smart. Now it costs 150000 and it took us almost two in-game years to make that much. Plus, it'll take a lot longer to earn that money back, and if we want to upgrade the barn to get more cows, that's another 120,000 Gs. Marvelous, what do you think we're made of? Now, a lot of other changes in the game are welcome. There are better menus, better onboarding, and more useful names for hybrid crops. Banana plus peach equals a banana instead of the original name, which was mage rum? A grape plus an apple is a grapple instead of fuju. All of this makes the game much more player friendly without altering the vibe too much. The best change though is probably the tools, which now take up their own slots in your inventory. 
meaning that you can now carry way more stuff and you don't have to put the tools back when you're done with them. But even with these changes, don't go into a wonderful life expecting an easy ride. In the first year, we were heavily disappointed by how unenjoyable the game seemed. Was this a bad remake or were our memories of loving the game just wrong? And we had to assume the former because there's no way our memories were just wrong, right? Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life is frustratingly obtuse about most things, like how often to water your crops, how to actually make money, and the fact that you're not able to interact with anything if you're holding a an item or a tool. It also doesn't tell you that many of the improvements and upgrades that make the game easier are only achievable through making friends, or that you have to get married by the end of the first year, or that some items, animals, and upgrades are only available at very specific times of the month or the day. Stardew Valley, this is not. In fact, Playing the game is an interesting exercise in seeing how much farming sims have really changed over the last 20 years, and you'll find yourself missing those conveniences from time to time. You'll miss sprinklers and machines that auto-gather eggs and milk. You'll long for actual mines that aren't just 16 ground tiles to dig into. You'll wish that the digging and fishing mechanics were even a tiny bit more interesting or challenging. It can all seem like a massive step backwards if you're used to more modern farming games. But the more we played this game, a game that's actually one of Kate Gray and I's childhood favorite games, the more we remembered the original and the more we realized that this remake is actually incredibly faithful and we had just forgotten. And actually, there are a lot of quality of life changes that smooth over some of the rougher parts while maintaining the charm. For example, it's a lot faster to get farming done with snappier animations and the option to water multiple tiles at once. There are also new events, new festivals, and lots of things to add to the encyclopedia that give you a sense of a fuller, richer world. Any friction that remains is purposeful. This is a game that's meant to be slow. The Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons games were initially based on the creator Yasuhiro Wada's longing for rural Japan, and this remake is closer to that original vision than a modern take on the genre, which tends to focus on satisfying game loops and automation as the end goal. The satisfaction in A Wonderful Life doesn't come from making millions of farm bucks every day or maxing out relationships or getting the biggest house. It comes instead from the real world satisfaction of a job well done and a life well lived, of making the inhospitable into the livable, and then into something that you can be proud of. If you've ever had your own garden, you'll know that that kind of work takes years to come to fruition. In A Wonderful Life, each season is 10 days long. Each chapter is at least a year long. And by God, it takes at least a year and a half in game before you've built up enough momentum to actually feel like you're moving forwards. If you want to finish this game, you'll be looking at around 30 to 50 hours of largely repetitive farm work. But at least the game changes with you. As characters age, people move in and out of the town, have children, and watch those children grow up too. And you know what? We think a wonderful life is worth the time you'll need to invest. Especially if you're a fan of sedate farming life sims that you can poke your head out for half an hour a day. Or if you're a fan of the OG experience, which has been recreated pretty lovingly by the developers. A Wonderful Life will never be Stardew Valley, that's true. But it's refreshing to see a remake that avoids playing catch up by staying true to its own roots, and by reminding us of our roots too. Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life retains the charm and the pleasant tedium of the original, while bringing enough features up to date that it's not a total chore to play. Fans of later farming sims might find it too slow and too dull, but we encourage you to embrace the slow and dullness to find a surprisingly fulfilling and earnest game underneath. After all, this game is the granddaddy of Stardew Valley, and it's not too hard to see the family resemblance. Just uh, use a guide or call up a friend for help. Trust us. We here at Nintendo Life give Story of Seasons a wonderful life on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10.
Now, if you'd like to check out more news and information and maybe even a handy walkthrough about how to earn money in Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life, you can find that over at nintendolife.com and we'll even leave a link in the description down below for you. Do let us know if you have any fond memories of playing this game back in the day and if you're looking forward to playing this remake or if you've never played it before and are going to be diving in for the first time. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you head down there to that subscribe button and let it know it's been living a wonderful life. And then ring that notification bell to let it know that it can come inside for dinner and to be notified whenever we put up new videos. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you again to Kate Gray for spending so many seasons in this new A Wonderful Life remake. I'm Zeon from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time.